please remember to like, subscribe, share, and hit the notification bell. All of the YouTube things, just hit all of the buttons, except the dislike button. Don't hit that one. You know, Matt, since we have you here, I would love to get some background on how you got, basically got your gig with the Nuggets. So I started following that on Twitter during the Nuggets title run in 2023. Yeah. During the Lakers series in particular, you were constantly, you were one of the people that was constantly posting clips during the games. And it was really cool, like seeing somebody that like works with the team being in such like awe of the team. It was just like really mm -hmm. cool as like a, a new member of the fandom to see like how um, invested it seemed like everybody, you know, was with that team. And I know that you write articles about the, about various concepts uh, throughout the regular season. Um, I know you just did a video on the big comeback that the Nuggets had at Golden State. And I think you told me that you'd only been started working with the Nuggets like shortly before the title run. Is that right? Yeah, I got there March. Like me and Reggie showed up. Wow. wow. <laughs> Together. <laughs> Same flight no. And, uh, <laughs> and you were covering the Nets before that? Yeah, so I covered the Nets uh, for, I guess, independently or like for a blog for four or five years, I think. Um, so I did that for a long time. Uh, I just turned 30 this year. So I did that when I was like, I think I started when I was 25 ish, 25, 26. And uh, yeah, it was fun. I mean, I covered them when they first had the D'Angelo Russell. Karis mm -hmm. LeVert, Jared Allen team. In my first year, they signed KD, Kyrie. Um, at that point, that's when I got credentialed. I was able to start going to the games. Well, for until COVID hit, but yeah, went to a couple games. Uh, and then COVID hits, they get hardened and um, just continue to kind of cover throughout. Um, and then, yeah, the Nuggets thing came about a little bit before I eventually came out here, came to fruition, came out in March. And initially I was like, yeah, I'll, you know, cover the playoffs. Sounds good for you guys. I didn't know how long the playoffs are going to go. So I think Grace, what you saw with like me taking in how good the team was like, that was so real because I'm going to these games. I'm like, Holy shit. Nicole looks pretty good. Huh? <laughs> this guy is good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they are so fun to watch that year. It was some of the best basketball I've watched. You know, I, like so many people, I, I really fell in love with the game and like the schemes and how it's played with the Spurs back in like 2014. Mm -hmm. I was just obsessed with that team. Like I love that team so much. So to watch the Nuggets last year, but the year before, especially like that 2023 run and just the way they played, I was like, man, this is like, this is so cool to watch. And it really was like, you know, I covered my first ever finals. Um, seeing the celebrations was crazy. It was just like, I didn't expect wow. any of it because I'm coming from a team that was, uh, you know, had just traded away Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, and then <laughs> next thing you know, it's the finals. So it was a wild year. Um, but it's been really fun to just settle in and, yeah, continue to kind of find my footing and figure out what type of things I want to do out here. So when you first started, it was just going to be for the playoffs, and then it was just kind of like, you know, let's see from there? Or... <laughs> How does, no, like, that how does like, a contract pressure. in this kind of work, <laughs> like, how does that work? Do you know you're going to be with the team for a year at least, or, you know, some of it, I don't some know of what it's like to have that work. kind of, that kind of life. Yeah. It, some of it's contract work. I, I'm not, I'm not, but I, it's like, it was, it was still kind of like, I, so I got like, I don't, I don't even get into all this, but like, I, yeah, I got the job and then it was kind of like, Hey, can you like come out and cover playoffs? And I was like, yeah of course they'll cover play i love going to playoff games so um yeah, you're like was, yeah that's why yeah, okay <laughs> uh, you're like wait i expected that this would be <laughs> yeah, <sweet. laughs> like um, so i was living in airbnb at the time uh for all throughout the playoffs last year which was also like kind of added to the whole story of it and i'm living in this airbnb like somebody's basement uh and covering playoff games for a team that went on to win it all um so I, I, I just, I didn't know how long the run was going to go, right? Like when the mm -hmm. playoffs ended, I flew back to New York and like packed all my stuff and then moved out here full time. Oh, so wow. I'm like out here time. with like a suitcase of clothes <laughs> and like a computer. And I'm like, wow. I don't know where it's going to go. Uh, and sure enough, like it goes all the way. Yes, <laughs> it, was. The <laughs> it was. It was so fun though. I mean, and it's like, you know, I, I traveled and got to see all these new places. So 
Um, you know, I'd never been to Phoenix. Um, mm. I'm from California, so I've seen LA a bunch. But right. um, it was just cool. It was like such a different experience. I like. I think for me, like the nature of coming out here and seeing a city for the first time, and like mm. living in somebody's basement, like it actually kind of enhanced that whole experience because I was so thrown into the mix that it kind of looking back, I can reflect on it and be like, oh, that was so crazy, man. Like so much stuff got thrown at me, but like, what a, what a payout, right? Like get to watch a, a team win a championship. Like what a, yeah. what a crazy way for all that to end. Yeah. But yeah, so Especially cool. basically like, the championship was all about me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were the good luck. You brought it. You, you were oh, the, I mean, no, it's the, like a really cool yeah. perspective. Yeah. The last thing we needed Three years to coming down. Do it's all celebrating that brooks not nah, but it it was a uh, it was it was really it was surreal i don't know i don't know how to that's the only way i can describe it i'd say it's kind of almost like unexpected because i'm sure you were getting very familiar with the nuggets like heading into this and working on the nuggets and mm -hmm. with them to predict that they were going to go on right then and win win the finals and win it all i mean i'm sure nuggets fans were confident but i was wondering like how much you expected that and or were you just kind of like each series just taking it series to series if you were like man i actually think this is wide open for them they could go all the way so i'll put it like this like i watched um bucks nets like that whole playoff series was there in person like man. durant had like i was like i think it was game uh, was it game five game five and seven he was like ridiculous i don't yeah, know if you guys like, took over here. yeah that incredible was crazy. Yeah. and i left that game and i was like Wow, that is like I think that's the best I've anybody ever like seen anybody ever play basketball. Like that was so good. I and so we play the Suns and I'm like, dude, I kind of know, I kind of know what what Durant can do. Like I know that guy's a demon in the playoffs. And then I see what Jokic does and I go, oh, <laughs> it's like <laughs> I didn't know you could do. You, I didn't know you'd go another level higher than that. Um, but that was I think that for me too. Like just the fact that the Nuggets played a team with a guy who you know, on the Suns that headlined the former team mm -hmm. that I were, like, you know, covered mm. for years and years. It was so, it just was, the whole thing was really surreal, honestly. Yeah. Even Bruce being on the Nuggets. Uh, That's right. I, I was going to ask Jeff, about that. Jeff, like, how yeah. long was Bruce there, there before? People. DJ? DJ? Like, it was just, <laughs> yeah. like, it was I mean, DJ so was so, like, there that they yeah. got that coach fired for not starting him over Jared Allen. <laughs> hired again, though. Good for him. Good <laughs> yeah. Time good for penny but but yeah uh it, it was just like a really strange experience where it's like there are all these familiar faces i'm surprised dallas didn't make it too just so I, like Kyrie would be there also so i could just run into one more familiar <laughs> right. face but yeah um it was weird it was really strange it was like seeing all these familiar faces seeing bruce like walking down the halls of playoff games when they won i saw bruce in the locker room i was like Damn, dude, crazy couple of years, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. How we get here? Who, who would have thought <laughs> it's the Paul Rudd meme? Right. It really was. <laughs> yeah. It really was. So, uh, it, it it was it was pretty. Um, it was just a I don't know surreal. Like I don't have another word for it, but it's it was so. Crazy. So Matt, before you uh you know were working for this blog and covering the Nets, like how did you even get into sports media? I wrote on my own website at first. Um, okay. Is and... your, is your like background in like writing and journalism nope. or psychology? Okay. Major. Oh, wow. I took psychology. <laughs> yeah. My That's path is wild. One. <laughs> yeah. uh, I took a psychology, I did psychology all throughout school um, uh -huh. and then graduated. I had a um, medical supplies sales career oh, by career. I mean like a year, uh, I had a right. real estate career, uh, Oh wow! Under a I year. Can see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't was my it wasn't my forte. Um, All that enthusiasm and projecting. I am enthusiastic, uh, <laughs> but so I, I had basically I had ten lives before I even like you know thought about doing sports. But I, I always like I loved basketball. Like love love basketball. Like if I'm on break, I remember my first job out of school. Uh, I would take lunch break, and instead of like sitting with other people this could make me sound so weird like antisocial but i would instead of sitting with people i would go to my car uh i would eat my lunch and i would just sit on house of highlights and just watch <laughs> like russell westbrook <laughs> points five rebounds against the hornets and i'd be like good lunch only five fine. rebounds yeah That's I'd, no, I'd watch everything <laughs> i i would just watch every single highlight i could watch i was so obsessed with basketball at that point um and then you know i think it was 
I I'd live, was living at San Diego or living in San Diego at that point. And I started writing kind of a little bit on the side um, just because I, there are people that I loved reading and I was like, I want to give this a shot. And yeah, started writing a little bit on a blog um, and then had the opportunity to live out with family in New York for a summer. And uh, because I'd started writing stuff on the side on a blog, I was like, maybe I should try to, you know, see if I could get something with this. I got a social media internship doing I like posting memes basically for yeah. uh, a Knicks fan page at the time. And then from there wrote a couple of things for their website and used those as samples and then got my first blogging gig. And then it was kind of just building out from there, meeting people, um, getting credentialed. And then uh, eventually I built like enough of a portfolio and covered enough games and kind of just got to do enough things that I could send in a resume that actually is like, gonna be you know not sent to the trash so I, you know that was uh that was kind of the journey but it, it took a long time uh it, it did it took four or five years to really get there but i think part of that was just i literally started from scratch like very, yeah. very absolute uh that is really cool well. so. i wouldn't have known that you didn't have like a like writing communications like some kind of like media like background well before all of this because you do all of it so well like i really Thank love you. nuggets knowledge series um mm. we're going to talk about summer league a little bit later but um i think one of the like first like non twitter things of yours that i really <laughs> paid attention to was the the like series you were doing on all of the rookies in summer league last year <laughs> actually like speaking of that when it comes to like your day to day stuff, like how often is it that you get like assigned a thing to do versus like pitching your own like stories or ideas for like a video or whatever? It's, I mean, I'll have things that like come in, but I think that's like that a lot of them are just like, you know, oh, well, there's a like some of the stuff for well, I'll take like ring night last year. Like all that stuff is like this is coming in. We're having this event at this time. Like that's, which is like, makes sense. Like I'm running the mm -hmm. website, so I should like get all that stuff up. Um, but I actually think like the beauty of, and why I like, I love the gig that I'm in is that I have a ton of freedom. And that was what I was told, you know, kind mm. of even interviewing is like, you make of this, like you kind of, it's your sandbox. Like you can take this as far as you want to. So, and I love that. Like I'm, I've never been somebody who's like, had issues with coming up with ideas. I've always feel like I'm just always thinking about basketball. I think that's <laughs> I part know of what it. That feels <laughs> it's, it's overwhelming yeah. sometimes. It's overwhelming. Uh, but it's, uh, I think that definitely plays into it. But it's, I mean, it's amazing. You know, I like all, I like, we'll take last playoffs, like Nicola's game five. Um, you know, I get to sit there and like, a, a whole article and like write about <laughs> his post-ups and like write about okay he's reading the corner man and then he's finding ag in the dunker spot and like that's what i get to do for a job like and <laughs> i don't have and i'm allowed to do that which is super cool so um that i i've always 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 and will always appreciate like with this gig i have so much freedom to like really just share what i see which sometimes i'm right about things sometimes i'm not but that's that's kind of the role I'm in, which is really okay. cool. So it's awesome that you ended up with the Nuggets. We're super happy to have you Thank here you. in this org as fans. Obviously, Grace and I love following you on Twitter. And if anyone Thanks. listening to this has not followed Matt yet, you have to do it right now. But the Nuggets were kind of billed as this team that was one of the most fun teams to watch, kind of when Jokic was coming up, because he was kind of an unknown, like, some people were aware of it. Some people weren't because Denver, you know, smaller market than the coasts. But uh, it must be exciting just to, like, do what you do and play, have this sandbox for a team that's still argued as one of the most fun teams to watch. Yeah, it is. I mean, so it's funny. Like, I watch them. A, uh, I, don't, I watch them some. It would be like when I'd get back from a Nets game and I'm like, all right, I need to kind of tone things down. Time to relax. Let's throw on like a Pacific or whatever uh, late game because I'm on East Coast time out there. Yeah, so right. I, I watch a lot of like Nuggets, Blazers, stuff like that. So I like watch them. Um, if you look way back, I don't even know what website this would be on, but there are some archives of me writing about Gary Harris. So like oh, wow. I've always kind of like I've I've enjoyed watching Denver. Um, I, it's just you know I I covered a different team for so long, um, and and that team got really good. The Nets were like you know, one of the marquee teams for 
a couple years there. But they're, they're, I, I've watched Denver on and off for a long time. I've always loved watching them. Me and my dad have loved watching Jokic. There was yeah. a Christmas break where I came home, and I was like, "You're gonna like this guy, Dad." Like, <laughs> I showed nice. you, I showed you. I don't remember who I showed him before, but I was like, "You're gonna like this guy. He's he's fun to watch." So it's funny. They've they've been a part of my life, and you know, in some shape or form for a while. Jokic is one of the most exciting players. But are there any new young players that you're most excited about watching at this summer league? Yeah, um, I'm like Mr. Julian. I'm like the Julian Strawhead yeah. hype train this year, which nice. is which catching on some steam. It's it's uh it seems like he's the name for the last couple of weeks of like guys on the existing roster just on Twitter. Which take it out what you will, but uh, <laughs> I'm I'm uh, I'm really excited to watch him. I think he has just a big opportunity. Um, if you look at kind of how the bench is coming together his shooting and his ability to relocate and cut, um, be a part of that offense, you know, use his shooting gravity uh, is all going to be really important. So he's just like, he kind of brings that bench unit together to me. And as a result, I feel like I've been watching him a lot. It's funny you mentioned that we have uh, this week, we're dropping a nuggets knowledge uh, on Julian. So I went, pretty in depth into just different sets that they run for him, which is a lot, by the way, they run a lot of sets. Um, I actually talked to Malone last week and he said they run the third most ATOs for him behind Nicola and Jamal. So pretty good wow. company. Right? <laughs> like, um, so it, it's, he's a big, I think he's like a really big factor and um, I'm excited to put that out if I'm allowed to shamelessly promo something yes, here please. oh no absolutely no plug, I want to see plug that whatever too. go ahead cool i saw some of the the mini camp practice media and julian was talking a little bit more about um ball handling and playmaking than i was yeah. expecting in terms of what he's been focusing on in I'm, his game i was curious about that too because he can do it like he's like a mm -hmm. i and which is like makes him the big crux of this video i don't want to give it away too much but like he is such a perfect fit for Jokic ball like he really is I mean he's he's good off shooting off handoffs he's really good at like relocating turning getting a shot up and like that you know like he's such a quick uh shooter that's able to turn and catch on different angles and get shots up he's his range stretches out to like 28 feet but he's also really good at pocket passing like he's got a real some of the other reads I don't know if he's had the opportunity to show them yet but in the limited instances that we've seen him run pick and roll, he's really good at those pick and roll, like, like you know, pocket passes, which yeah. is like the most important pass you can have. If you're a ball yeah. handler on the Nuggets, like if you can make yeah. the pocket pass to Jokic where he's in his shooting pocket and he's able to get a floater up, that is by far the most important pass you can have. And he's got it already. So, um, yeah, I, I'm definitely curious to see what that means. And like, I even want to know, like, all right, Julian Strother, ball handler. What does that mean? Like, is he taking the ball up, you know, off a rebound, setting up the offense, or is it more like somebody else is attacking? Let's say it's Jalen Pickett or Trey Alexander driving, you know, running off, coming off a screen, and then kicking a cross court to Julian. Is he now making a second side read? Like, is it primary stuff or is it more mm -hmm. like ancillary things? So, yeah, I think it'll be really fun. He's he's definitely like number one for me of like people I'm watching, but the team was fun. I mean, there's a lot of guys that like have big opportunities. Jalen's got a big opportunity just with where the point guard spot is right now. Obviously Holmes has got a ton of opportunity there. So there's a lot to watch, but he's, he's definitely way up top for me. I've just been thinking a lot about what the a hundredth percentile version of Julian Strother looks like on this roster. Yeah, no. <laughs> Will has been talking about point Julian ever since <laughs> I can remember since I started following you. You were really Yeah, I was always like he could ever since idea. he was drafted, I was like, maybe he could even play point guard at some point. Like, let's <laughs> see. But obviously I don't think that's gonna happen right now. So if he's either if it is like second read type stuff and he's nailing it. Who knows? It could be something he, if he's getting on that pocket pass consistently and it's hitting and, you know, his gravity is working, his shoot his shots on, like you never know. But right now it's probably too much for him. I mean, these players already, the expectations are pretty high for them to come right. in and be contributors on a championship contending team. Super interesting. A lot of times players who are drafted, they're going to 
play more on these teams. The leash is going to be maybe longer. With the Nuggets, they're high draft picks. Do you think like they're under unique pressure because of this like plan that Booth is doing, or how how do they look right now? Yeah, I guess a little bit inherently because like it is. I guess you just sort of look at it as like, all right, like there's only so many roster spots, right? So I don't know, like if Julian is is shooting, is it coming along? It does kind of, it, it does become a little bit of like a, all right, what are we doing next? Are we playing bigger where it's like Holmes, Vlatko, Peyton at the two, you know? And so I, I do think in a way, like it's built in that the young guys are going to be contributors. That's the whole basis of this plan. But I, I think just from based on what they said, um, there is like patience with them. I that's something that I think it was, I think it was Dayron who said that today or yesterday about how there is such a sense of understanding within the organization that hey, there are going to be growing pains, there are going to be things like that. So I, I do think there's that side of things is being maintained. Listeners, leave us a review. We're on Spotify. We're on Amazon Music. We're on a- Apple Music. Finally, it's awesome. Will did all of the things on the behind the scenes and you know, now you can listen to us anywhere. And you know, always remember that winning is fun and losing sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry.